Hi all, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we will continue the development of our 2D Endless Runner game. We will add the logic to destroy sections containing objects that are no longer in the frame. We will add crystals and the logic to collect them and the logic to increase the counter. Let's start with the logic to destroy the sections that are no longer in the frame. So right now if I will run our game, so what will happen? The section just keeps on spawning once I reach a certain point. So you can see section 2 was created or spawned. Now again section 2 spawned. Once I reach a specific point like the near to the end point based on the logic the sections will be spawning again and again but what we want to do is now uh, we want to delete few of the sections once th those are no longer required in the game scene so let's write the code not the code but the logic for it okay so i'll do one thing so i'll click on the section zero i'll add a new component to it call a script machine I'll get a new script machine called as, uh, let's call it as destroy sections. Let's edit it. So there are specific ways or different ways through which we can destroy the sections that are no longer in the frame. Uh, but the one that we'll be using would be simply by calling a specific node called as on destroy not on destroy I think it's destroy yeah this one so this particular node takes two parameters the first one is the object that we want to destroy so we'll simply pass the current object through this node this and the time let's just keep it as 15 so what will happen once the section is created in the game after 15 seconds it will be automatically deleted or destroyed so every uh, every object that is under this particular section all those objects will be destroyed now let's just test it out and see what happens Section 1 is generated. So you see now, after 15 seconds, the section 0 game object was deleted or destroyed. So this means our logic is working absolutely fine. So let's go back. So now we have done this for section 0. So since we created our graph over here, like the source was graph so we can use the same script machine for other sections as well so let's go back to our asset the prefabs click on section 1 add a new section component our script machine and we can now select our destroy section graph over here let's do the same thing for section 2 select the graph now let's test it out right now section 0 and section 2 are sp spawned so after 15 seconds uh, both of these should be destroyed from my hierarchy window so you see both of them got destroyed nice yep that means our uh, logic is working absolutely fine so it will keep on spawning new sections and also destroying them after a certain time whichever we have put in our game logic great now let's add a logic to collect crystals or coins whichever you will be using in your game so in our game in this tutorial we'll be using crystals so i've already imported one asset under this asset I have this crystal or gems we'll call it crystal so let's just bring it out in a section
let's resize it a bit this looks fine yep now let's do one thing uh, first let's just rename it crystal now let's add a script machine to it we'll create a new one called as crystals let's edit the graph so now what we want to do is once the player collides with these crystals then these should you know get destroyed as well as the counter for the crystal gets increased by one so for that thing let's first include one box collider 2d this is fine and do remember to check the is trigger so that even if player collides with these uh, crystals the player you know doesn't uh, get any physical attribute or physical action from it it won't be stopped from it this will simply trigger the events so now let's get back to our script machine so over here we'll simply use the node on trigger enter 2d so the node that we want to find is game object compare tag this one over here will pass player because we want to see if our, co our crystal collided with the player object or not so from collider we'll simply pass this over here so now if our crystal collided with the player game object then this will return true otherwise false so now let's put one if node over here we'll pass the value like this if this is true then what we want to do is we want to destroy our crystal we'll use this one in object we'll pass this now let's test it out one thing you need to make sure is you have selected the tag as player for the player game object now let's try so once the player collides with this crystal it should destroy yep so it's working fine one more thing that we can add over here we can create a scene variable called as crystal count that will keep a track of all the crystals that we have collected let's keep it as integer so once our game object gets destroyed we want to increase the count of crystal uh, count by one so we we'll use add scalar over here let's just pass this value let's do one thing uh, let's just copy this and add more crystals hmm. now let's test it out so if we go over here in the scene variables the count is 3 that means the logic is working absolutely fine great now what we can do is we can simply create a prefab of this crystal object so that we can use or spawn it in our entire game so let's just drag this and drop in prefab section and now we have a prefab ready now let's just add one more game object item in our game we'll call it pomp so let's just put it under section 0 let's scale it down a bit i think this is fine
Hmm. So now, if a player collides or touches this palm game object, then player's health should be decreased by one. So we we'll use the same logic that we have used for the collectible, like the crystal. In case of crystal, we were increasing the count of the crystals that are collected by one. In case of a uh, bomb or bombs, we will simply decrease the player's health by one. So now, uh, let's just go over here. Add a circle collider to D. Let's scale it down a bit. Yeah, this is fine. Make sure you select is trigger. Now let's add a script machine to it. Let's get a new one. We'll call it bomb. Let's go over here. Again, the same thing. On trigger, enter 2D. We want first. We want to check whether the bomb game object has collided with player or not. So we'll use the same node that we used earlier. Compare tag. We'll pass player over here. If this is true, then first thing that what we need to do is we need to destroy this bomb object after that we want to decrease the health of the player game object so for that what we can do is uh, we can create a scene variable because scene variables are shared between all the game objects that are there for a particular scene so we can use utilize the same scene variable. So let's just create player health over here. Let's put uh, let's just put three as a player health right now. So now what we want to do is after the game object is destroyed, like the bomb game object is destroyed, we want to decrease the player's health. So let's do set player health variable and let's just subtract it. Over here, we'll pass the player health minus one. That's it. Now, let's test it out. I just move it over here. For some reason, it didn't destroy the game object. Let's just check it out. So it looks like we forgot to pass the collider value over there. So let's just add this over here. Now if we go back then it should destroy the bomb game object as well as decrease the player's health by one. Okay so it destroyed. Now if uh, we will simply check the variables value in the scene. Crystal is one and player health is two. So yep. That's it. Uh, so in the next video, we'll include more sections as well as we'll include more assets to our game environment so that it looks good. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.